spotlight. Today we shine it on someone whose journey has honestly been as remarkable as any of the films she's actually featured in. Um, from the luminous face of the 90s to someone hit with tremendous personal setbacks, someone who's triumphed, who's come back and now is here ready to dazzle us on screen again. Manisha Kerala, good to see you. Good to be back. Yes, I can imagine. <laughs> and as you can see, you are not alone in that sentiment. What a journey, right? Like, do you yeah. sort of, when you sit back and sort of take stock, even now, what's going on in Manisha's head? Ah, oh, right now, at present, the release of my movie. Yes. And uh, only that. That's it. Yeah, yeah, just because we've made this movie with so much of, uh, you know, passion and belief and, you know, this is a unique story. Right. And so to release it properly is equally nerve-wracking. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we've got Dear Maya. It's an unusual role. It's a, it's, it's. It's a pretty bold choice of role, actually, in a lot of ways. Yes, it's 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 an unusual role, right? And uh, you would say bold because of my looks. <laughs> because I, you know, this is an industry known for its vanity. Let's be honest. <laughs> Absolutely, I I was very kicked about it because uh, as an actor, we are always hungry and striving to do something different. Something right. here was an opportunity for me to do it, and I just hope I've done the role right and I've done the justice to this character. And and looking pretty was the with the furthest of my worry, actually. I mean, and there's an irony in that, right, from what the face that everyone, but Intiaz Ali, amongst others, has described as the most beautiful. I don't think that's true. I think he's worked, honestly, with, with some of the really pretty, pretty faces in the industry, like Karina Kapoor, right. I mean, she's gorgeous, yeah. and Deepika, she's beautiful. So, well, I took that compliment, yeah. uh, but, you know, I, yeah, not true, actually. Yeah. <laughs> there a point, were you always like this? where that vanity played less of a role or do you feel like you know in the 90s say when oh no 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 i um honestly my training was a hardcore commercial uh, right. cinema and subhaji yes. training grounds uh, where the looking pretty was really important yes. and to a large extent i remember shooting for my movie uh, uh, bombay yeah. with mani sir and i was uh, he didn't want me to put on any makeup and I was like petrified of it and I thought I was going to look horrible and I was going to look so bad without, you know, makeup and unglamorous and I look sad. So I used to quietly in the songs, yeah. quietly go and put, you know, makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Did he ever know? <laughs> and, and he would, he could tell, instantly. I mean, he could instantly tell and the camera, you know, he could tell and Manisha, please wipe it, wipe it. <laughs> and I said, oh no, damn it, you know, caught I, again, caught again. Yeah. so I tried that, I think, uh, twice, twice, yeah. and I realized every time I would fail, so I stopped, I gave up, I said, okay, now, I, and, you know, uh, interestingly, at the end of the film, and the film release, and I, when people start saying, oh, you look so beautiful, you look so good, I, that's when I realized, you know, it's all camera. You know, I could be <laughs> whatever, but uh, the, when the, we have a good DOP, the magic happens. Hey, was that was that liberating? Was that sort of the beginning of the point at which you sort of realized that perhaps conventional vanity, such as it is, was not all it was cracked up to be, or did that come later? As with age, yeah. with time, with multiple movies that I've done, um, now in my 40s, yeah. um, I guess, uh, 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 looking pretty has lesser importance, right. you know. Um, for, as an artist, for me, uh, what really excites me is, uh, first of all, I get a character which can show a range of emotions and I get the scenes to perform. <laughs> and uh, so if that's given to me, I actually I want to just look the part yeah. as convincingly as possible. The heart of this film is a prank, right? Right. Um, I'm told that is something you have a very natural affinity for. Yes, yes. yes. Have, have, have they backfired ever or have they usually... Uh, I, I, I don't want to go uh, and tell the whole world right now, uh, but yes, they have. Backfired? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and very badly. Okay, so she won. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh. no, 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 no. Okay, yeah. fine. We, we, we're just getting her warmed up. Who knows? We've still got the rest of the show to go. <laughs> so let's now open up to the audience. Who has got the microphone? So my question towards you is, uh, there are many Bollywood actors, as well as, uh, if I'll say about the Khans. They, uh, they prefer to work with their teenagers actresses. All right? And they uh, deny to work with their ages actresses. So what do you want to say on this? <laughs> I don't think Ali Afar qualifies as a teenager, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I really know you're much younger, much younger. 
but she'd be delighted that you think so. <laughs> think, right? <laughs> but you well, know, that's a good question, you know, and uh, um, I think you should ask the Khans. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a trend. Like, and you know, like I said, the Salman Khans, the yeah. you know, the Shah Rukh Khans, the, all of the big stars, they can act and. You know, they've, they've acted with all kinds of yeah. colleagues and co-stars, but they can sort of get away in a sense with things that their female colleagues can't. Yes. Right. Yes. This is true. Does that, does that, did that bother you? Does it bother you just a lot less with everything you've sort of seen and been through now? Actually, it bothers me much less. Yeah. <laughs> it really doesn't bother me too right. much. Uh, uh, as long as I get to see their good films, yeah. I don't mind. Right. Okay. Wonderful. Hello, this is Tanzila Sheikh. So, how do you relate yourself to the play, to the role you have played in the film, Maya? Maya Devi's character is totally different than uh, me as a person. You know, Maya Devi is somebody who's locked herself uh, for 20, 30 years in a haveli. She thinks the world is a very scary place. She doesn't uh, allow anyone to come into a, you know, uh, area, her house. She has big, big dogs, Great Danes, and she lets them lose if somebody comes and so she's she's very scared of the world whereas I I you know I'm not like that you know I'm very much people's person and uh, so uh, it's totally different uh, that's why it was more interesting for me to play her Sushakana, I'm from Walia College and firstly I want to say ma'am you look really beautiful ma'am thank you so much like is it easy to like uh, come in an industry without a like a having a godfather you know uh, honestly speaking uh, this is a, maybe it's easier for people to get in when they know somebody in the industry just to get in and to probably at the max is if you have a big father big director producer and he'll make one film for you but he can't really make your career so for that you have to have it in you you know your talent your hard work is the prime most important thing in any career, especially in this uh, film industry. Connection, you know, can push you to some extent, but not, it can't really help you in the long run. We've seen though a slew of, you know, particularly like in, in the last few years, there's been, you know, and I know someone here, I'm stealing their question, had a question <laughs> about nepotism, which they wanted to put to you. And, you know, it's been the hot button topic at the moment. Um, do you feel like it's more of a topic now than it was? Um, do you think it's more of an issue now than it was? I'm not too sure how much uh, to support or disagree with it. Because uh, by and large, if you're meant for something, it will happen for you. Mm -hmm. And yes, it can uh, be slightly uh, difficult initially, mm -hmm. but you have enough fire in your belly, you will do it. Yeah. With a, yeah. you know, so I come from that thought process because uh, I was also an outsider. Yeah. You know, I, was, I didn't even belong to uh, Bombay, Mumbai. I studied in Delhi and, you know, yeah. but it, it's, happened for me. The second thing I want to talk about is that when Dhirubhai Ambani gives his uh, legacy to his sons, nobody questions that. Yeah. So yeah. why would we want to worry too much about in the film industry? Right. You know, you mentioned uh, the, the fire, in, uh, how you need to have a fire in your belly. What was your drive at that stage? All of it like more than you anticipated? Absolutely. Much more than what I anticipated, what I thought and much, much more. And uh, I would say that initially, when I got such a huge break, you know, Subhashji yeah. and uh, Dilip Kumar yeah. and the whole works, you know, everybody. And then, uh, consequently, I signed uh, Firoz Saab, Pelaj Nilani, all the big names yeah. that time. So I uh, got into that whole groove. And honestly speaking, for me to get into the film industry, it wasn't a huge uh, hard work, but actually to get going yeah. we were i was a workaholic i was working three shifts a day 18 hours a day yeah. 12 hours was the minimum oh. every day i mean there was there was no life right. so it was just a work 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 yeah. you know? you've you've gone from seeing some of the most incredible highs um performances that are cult now that have been so critically acclaimed you've had to face you know some of the toughest times as well um facing your own mortality um you know dealing with an illness how do you sort of at this stage again sort of reconcile um just again this incredible disparity from there to you know there great heights and great lows yeah 
Um, I mean, it teaches you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I know you've shared a lot of those lessons. You're, you're, you're actually very generous about sharing those. I feel, honestly, uh, in our lowest of phase, uh, we tend to learn much more. There are, there is this uh, dwells uh, le life's lesson that we get to learn during a struggle, uh, then in our highs, then when we are at the top. But um, having said that, I think to to be successful also is very important sure. because then you feel, ah, yeah. you know, I what I have done, and you know, a pat on your back. And at the max, I can say is I've seen both the both side of the coin. Right. And all, all I can say is both are important. Both are vital. Both are vital and both are important. And it's, it's really now up to me to stay in balance. Always keep a check and never get too excited when, uh, when uh, you get too uh, super successful or not to get too miserable when you hit uh, rock bottom. Because everything is in passing. Nothing, nothing, pass, is, yeah. nothing is right. permanent. This yeah. too shall pass. Hello, ma'am. Ma my name is Nabil Mir. I'm from Pillai College. Ma'am, just wanted to ask, like, which was your hardest character you played? One was Kamoshi, where I play uh, a deaf and mute uh, parent's child who sings very well. So there was this whole constant uh, struggle of uh, uh, guilt because I knew that my parents couldn't sing and they couldn't hear. And I had, Annie had this passion to sing. So there was this thing that I had to portray. Um, also the fact that I had to learn sign language. I loved working in that because of that. Um, and I, I kind of loved working in Bombay, uh, Shaila Bano, where uh, Manisa had this amazing character that a Muslim girl and a Hindu boy, they fall in love and they run away and they get married and they get in the midst of Bombay riots and what all kind of struggle they go through and stuff like that. As we all know that you have been playing this, uh, this role as uh, Ranbir Kapoor's uh, mother, as in that is Sanjay Dutt's mother in reality. So how do you feel like, how can you relate yourself to Nargis, Nargis Dutt? <sighs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Nargis is a legendary figure. And so it's a huge responsibility on anyone who's going to portray her. And, uh, but you know, the good thing is, that I have a great director with me. And so he's, he's kind of prepared everything for me and um, for everybody, you know. Uh, so uh, there are beautiful, uh, beautiful scenes uh, we, have, uh, we have. And I'm really kicked about it and I want to do it right. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite excited about that movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you and all of us. Yeah. <laughs> now, you've of course worked with Sanju. Um, so what's it like sort of seeing Ranbir play him? Ranbir is the finest uh, that we yeah. have in this generation right. and, and uh, he is going to do a fabulous work that I know, you know, yeah. there's, n I mean, I expect only the best from him. Is it, is it, is it exciting, this, just this whole, this whole world? Like, and it must be so surreal for you, right? Because it's again, it's what you know versus what's being created, you yeah. know, it's a strange... Yeah. yeah, it is, it is, it is, yeah. 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 And this is the disclaimer that says she can't talk too much means yes. you can't explain anything more so we're not supposed Because to. Uh, the time will come to talk about it and I will talk about that. My name is Leander and uh, now who is your most favourite director if you wanted to work with them again? So many, I worked with so many good ones, you know Mani Ratnam, uh, Mani sir, he, he's my all time favourite. Sanjay Bansali, I just adore, adore, adore his cinema, you know, he's, he's such spectacular, so much romance and beautiful, oh, beautiful. So, uh, these two, you know, uh, for sure.